Okay, good. So then we have uh, we have a quorum, and it's six thirty. So I'd like to call the meeting to order. At six thirty, is there any adjustments to the agenda? All right, no adjustments to the agenda. Uh, uh, we can assign times. I would look to um, Jamie May to be to help me with this. Oh yeah. The reports of the board, maybe 15. For each report or just for the- Oh, the I'm team? thinking all of them. Okay. Great. Celebration of learning. I think it's like 10 minutes, maybe a little longer, the video. And then was there just, okay, so let's do 15. Then if there's any um, discussion afterwards. Okay, the policies. Five. Five. You guys move on them. Okay. Uh, all right, the budget. 20. You think? Okay. Um, the board goals, short term, long term, do we have? Um, I haven't seen those from Wednesday. Was there was there anything to, to bring forth tonight for that? Uh, yes, Amy, I was planning on reporting on our, our meeting just orally. We don't have anything um, to share uh, as far as a doc, but. Um, okay. So how much time do you think you need report? for that? Five minutes, okay. Well, it, unless there's any discussion around it, but um, probably five minutes. Okay. And the board guiding principles and protocols. What do you think, Bill? Fifteen. Yes. Sounds good. Okay. Fifteen. Do we have any um, new hires or resignations? No, we do not. Nope. Okay, and then we. Okay. Um, does somebody want to volunteer to kind of keep track of time? Be a timekeeper? I can if you want, Amy. Okay. You usually do it. I know. I know. I'd... Robert's got his phone out. So. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll see this. do that. Okay. Great. <clears throat> I feel like, yeah, it should flow tonight, I think. Yeah, I, I hope so. Um, okay, so we uh, do not have the minutes of Tuesday, November 22nd to approve, so we're going to uh, table that one. Um, we do have Tuesday, November 2nd um, to approve, and I do have a change to um, a, the name, the spelling of uh, one of the people in attendance, which is Nancy Woolley. Not Nancy Willie. Thank you. I don't know if you could take note of that, her last name is spelled W O O L L E Y. All right, I'll get that to Christy tomorrow. Um, can we go ahead and uh, and approve it with um, that that change tonight, or does it need to be changed and then we do it, approve it? Well, you can you can move to do it with that that amendment. Okay. I move that we accept the minutes as amended. Second. All in favor. Hi. Hi. Great. And then we have the minutes of Thursday, September 16th that we can approve. Entertain a motion to approve September 16th minutes. I move to um, approve September 16th minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. Excuse me. Yes. Um, I should have made it adjustments to the the uh, agenda. I just wanted to bring up briefly the subject of uh, getting copies of the um, of the plans of the high school. Oh, to add in the agenda. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's only a couple minutes. Do an underboard comment. Sure, that'd be fine. Yeah. Or under reports. Under reports. Under 
Okay. Um, we're on to public comment. Um, do we have any public attending? I do not believe so. Okay. Moving on to board comment. I guess uh, just a uh, real quick. Um, I've been trying to um, uh, get um, uh, electronic copies of the um, plans to the high school. They were discovered. The 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 paper plans have been discovered in the high school. Um, I suspect that the ones that were scanned were not the high school plans. Um, that's the ones for this building. So the ones that Tara has on a thumb drive that are electronic include all the plans of all three buildings. Oh. Um, I don't know how detailed of the plans you're looking for right now. Okay. I'm, um, I'm trying to react to responses from, uh, to requests from the people working on the feasibility study. Uh -huh. And um, so uh, one, I just wanted to make. But in terms of like actual plans that are maybe more detailed than the Black River report. Right. Um, Tara has a thumb drive, right? Tara at the office still from that, that has specific. Lyle people. has it. Lyle has it. Yeah. Okay. So I, so I, I, I am I'm waiting. To in touch. Well, I have, them. Is that the way? I have been in touch. So I, yeah. I guess I haven't gotten a response yet, okay. but if there's uh, any. The last email I saw from Black River was that they were going to try and share the thumb drive through a web portal with Lyle. That could then be shared with you was my understanding. So I can follow okay. up with Lyle again and find out where he is with that. Okay. And and if there are any that are, are not scanned, uh, do I have permission to get them scanned? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. The Black River one should be the most recent though. Yeah, I have that. Came, we yeah. can find it. As <laughs> part of the Black River study, we actually paid them extra to create detailed plans of all of our, our facilities so that we, we had that. Print out in digital, right, Amy? I'm sorry, what? Well, print out in digital, I believe. That's correct. Yes. And um, I know that uh, Jenny was, I, I don't know if it's a specific program that you need to open the electronic plans. So, um, I think I think the discussion between Black River and um, with Tara, like she was talking about, is really the best way to go forward here. Okay. And okay. Robert, the one plant set of plans that Polly emailed is that not what you were looking for for the high school? Uh, well, Polly, the only plan I got was the PDF, which is ba the basic layout of the high school. Okay, so you want something more than that? Is what you're looking for? That's what I, I understand from the, the people who are doing the study people who are asking you. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. Is there uh, any additional board comment? Okay. Moving on to reports to the board. The superintendent's report. Uh, so good evening. Uh, it's hard to believe it's already December. <laughs> um, things are flying by. Um, I'll just report it wasn't on here, but I'll add it. Uh, negotiations uh, with our, our teaching staff started um, yesterday evening. It was a really positive uh, first meeting between the committee and the board, so that's good news. Um, <clears throat> we also uh, implemented test to stay at, at this point. Tomorrow we'll have implemented our fourth school. Um, over the last five days, it's gone exceptionally well. Uh, we actually had two cohorts of students test out. Uh, they started last week, Sharon piloted for us. And it was, so, so thus far it's resulted in about 60 students who would have been quarantined right over the last two weeks that have been able to remain in school. Uh, so that's been really positive. Um, and uh, I would say now we've kind of got a pretty good workflow going in regards to it. And so just a reminder, those are for unvaccinated um, students um, that are asymptomatic who show no, no symptoms. The other thing I wanted to give the board a heads up on, um, Robert had alerted us to a website issue from one of your old domains. 
Uh, we so Ray's been working on getting that taken care of. Uh, and Robert, I sent you an email following up on that just this after evening. Okay. Um, and so we're in alignment. Uh, we're trying to work on the, the the prior two owners that have hosted that website no longer are able to help us with it. And so we're now in contact with the new current owners to see if we can get it navigated. And we're also in alignment for the next, uh, if this site gets put up for sale again, we're next in alignment to be able to purchase it back which doesn't cost much, um, but it would allow us to, to take care of the content. So anyways, there's an old site out there that we're trying to make certain is down. Speaking of that though, I have seen um, the website that will be ready to launch. We're launching new sites across the SU and uh, the RSUD site. I don't wanna take Lindy's Thunder away yeah, and we okay. will, it, it'll go in your next board report. Uh, and be released to families between now and your next board meeting. It looks awesome. Uh, and I'm really excited about it. Yeah. And so you'll be the first launch in the SU uh, with a new um, rebranding site. So that's, that's exciting. exciting. My daughter actually today when I picked her up from school said, you know, the Rochester's website is really old. It has a lot of old pictures on it. Just today she was telling me so. <laughs> So yeah, okay. and so there'll be a new uh, Rochester Stockbridge Unified District site that will have access to information across both schools. It looks really good. It's current. It also, what I like about it is the template we're going with um, will allow us to give uh, prospective um, hires and families all the information they would need. Plus current families like timely information around calendars, events, things of that nature, get to know the teaching staff, what their assignments are but it's, the, it's going to be the type of site where we'll be able to keep it current. It won't go obsolete. And so I'm feeling good about that. Um, and we leveraged ESSER funds to bring on the coordinator of communications part-time uh, to work under Ray to assist us with these types of projects. And I got to say, it's, it's been one of, the, one of the better investments that we've done. I don't know if you've noticed our Herald coverage is up significantly. Um, we'll have all, all of our Facebook pages now um, are coordinated and we have uh, new co fresh content happening weekly on all of them. And then by the end of the year, we'll have rolled out new sites everywhere. So including the SU, um, which is current, but when you navigate it, it's very slow and it's clunky. I think it's wonderful and timely because th this is how everybody is investigating the schools, the communities, the, this is how people are getting their information now. So I think it's, it's good, good timing. The, and the only other thing I'll add is I've talked to Kate, her name's Kate McLean uh, and Lindy about the concept. We're going to try to do a pretty significant push here in the upcoming months around recruitment. Um, and we've talked about both Pittsfield and Granville Hancock. And we've been doing quite a bit of work on that at the middle school level at Rudd um, thus far this, this fall. And Lindy will be partnering with their principal, Owen Bradley, to support some efforts there. So we're sharing in the knowledge we're gaining around recruitment and marketing. And so her other piece to that is to assist us with marketing as well. Um, so know that that's underway too. And, um, you know, in general, I would say there's really good momentum to the, our work in mathematics. Uh, I was over in Bethel. Um, this is my written report for an upcoming board, but yours already went out. But on uh, Friday the 10th, there was a, we had a training for math interventionists and special educators and pure professionals across the ESU that was hosted by Bonnie Bourne um, and Faye Severy actually helped lead it, which was great when we had mm -hmm. teachers, leaders, doing the instruction. I think it really builds sustainability to the effort. And um, I would just say that the there was a really great vibe there around our math energy and math work across the SU, which was exciting. So I'll take any uh, questions folks have other than those, those uh, updates. Um, no, the question is just a comment. Uh, very impressive. Um, it seems like you're running in all 12 cylinders or whatever you want a sports car analogy we've got here, but 
we're talking about uh, student achievement growth in the classroom. We're also talking about how we communicate with the public so they know what's going on with the public school system. And we just assume, you know, the public will support public education. Well, they need to know the wonderful things that are going on and what you're doing for our outreach and marketing, as well as uh, parents that have to decide, gee, um, should we come to this SU next year? Uh, we need to grow if we're going to have the resources to get things done. So on both those fronts, you're front and center and your, your team is doing wonderful things. So I want to commend you for that. Thanks, Bill. All right, moving on to the principal's report. Um, so you guys have my report. We've some kind of highlights is we finished parent teacher conferences, which has been great to have folks like back in the building again. That was very exciting. I think for a lot of parents, that was the first time in over almost two years, probably they've been back in the building. Um, so that was great. We are in the process of launching winter wellness, which will start in January months, which I know is something that folks are excited. We're going to partner with PICO this year because okay. their program is um, a little more geared to what we're looking for based on feedback. And if folks aren't comfortable with that. We're also doing stuff on campus with cross country skiing, ice skating, and snowshoeing for both groups. Um, so to access some local things as well as downhill skiing and snowboarding. Um, some other highlights, Jamie totally stole my thunder about the new website, but it is pretty <laughs> exciting and Kate's been great to work with. And it's exciting to have everything for both campuses and ARSA like, as a whole entity all together instead of two separate places um, and it is very easy to keep up to date. We also have launched a new Facebook that is a Rochester School, Rochester Stockbridge Schools Facebook page. Um, and our school counselor, Sam Demon, has taken over a lot of that and worked with Kate. And so currently both the Stockbridge and Rochester Facebook pages are still operational, but she uses that Rochester Stockbridge page, I think that's the right term, page to share onto the old pages to kind of attract families and we won't shut down the other ones um, without proper notice. But the goal is to all be under one entity again as well. And so folks in both communities can see what's going on in both, in both campuses, not just one versus the other. Um, I will say in terms of COVID, we have um, hosted our first PCR drive up clinic, which means the kids that were quarantined were able to come and test out on day seven. And that went really well and was actually exciting to kind of feel like there was a little control on the situation. Um, as well as we've held our first vaccination clinic, which is exciting as well. And then lastly, um, we're in the process of planning a middle school, high school like fair for families to come check out for grades four through six. We're really gonna advertise to come and look um, at the different opportunities out there for school choice. And that'll probably be January, February right now. Great, Justine. Yeah, I just wanted to um, put a question out there about um, the RSUD Facebook page and whether we should get rid of that now that there's two school combined or? Like the community one that was started a while back, is that the one you're talking about, Justine? Yeah, I guess it's the community one. I'm the admin for it now that I'm on the school board. You know, it was that was a maybe a board Facebook page specific, Justine. Is that what it was? Yeah, yep. So I, I guess I it sort of kind of overlaps, I think, right? But for the yeah, maybe why don't we add that for a future agenda items? Because we okay. we should discuss that, I think. Okay, great. Are there any other questions for Wendy? And then I would be remiss if I didn't invite everyone to come to our winter solstice celebration that Amy Braun is um putting together. And oh, I'm gonna get these dates backwards if I don't look it up. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, December 20th, right after school in Stockbridge, and December 21st in Rochester. And it's to celebrate the solstice, and you'll also kind of get to experience, um, be prepared to be outside and in the woods 
and you'll get to experience the tea and the mindfulness that she was kind of talking about the last time she came to present. Okay. But you're is there a time? Um, you're going to uh, time? I think it's right around 3.30 is what she's aiming for, Bill. But we've invited families and kids to attend as well. Wonderful. Uh, if there's no further questions for Lindy, has Bill got his hand raised? I can't quite see. Oh. Yes, I do. Um, okay. He's off the screen. I, from, from I, I think it goes back to Jamie. Um, at the last SU board meeting, um, the SU board voted unanimously to adopt uh, a multi-year student performance goal um, goals that basically spell out how we want our students in the key areas of math and, and reading and uh, writing uh, to meet state goals. And I think it's enormously significant. So I was just gonna ask Jamie to say a few words about that because uh, we're part of that process. Um, every school needs to, to lean forward and I have every confidence that we're gonna do it and exceed those goals right here in Rochester and Stockbridge, but I do think it's worthwhile to have Jamie speak to it and have it in the minutes. Yes, yeah, so um, actually we're working on a release to the faculty uh, prior to the holiday break on those adopted goals and what that means. Uh, and make certain that we're linking it to the work that they're already doing. It's the work that's underway in math and literacy, it's not another, right? And so we're looking to communicate that out. It'll get also go as a release out to the community um, and we're working on an interface too around how to progress monitor those on the website, Bill, so that it, when you click on it, for example, the achievement goal in literacy, um, for the state, we are using the state benchmark system, both on our, our STAR 360 and Track My Progress data, um, as well as on the Smarter Balance Assessment Consortium. And so we've got goals tied to both our local normed assessment and the statewide assessment in both math and literacy. And the goal is to, <clears throat> at the very least, meet the scale scores at the state level um, and or exceed, depending on whether it's literacy or math, um, by 2025, uh, which is very exciting. And we've also set progress monitoring goals on an annual basis in both areas that we can uh, meet in every grade level uh, across the SU. So it's not, it's not based on percentages as much as it's based on <clears throat> scale scores in each grade level. And so what we will do is, is you'll be able to click on, um, on the website, what is the goal in reading in grade four um, in, in literacy? You'll be able to click on that. It'll show you the chart of what the goal would be. And then it'll show you whether or not we met it or, exe or exceeded it and where that scale score is so that the we're accountable to the community. There's a, there's a progress monitoring piece that will be part of it. We also, uh, what I was really excited about too is we set goals around the students who are needing, who are at, uh, at a real, critical level in regards to intensive intervention and trying to decrease the number of students who need intensive intervention in, in math and literacy to decrease that percentage. And so we have goals in that regard as well. Um, and so it's, I think it's fairly comprehensive. I think it really measures whether or not our MTSS system is working. We have that, that goal around creating a multi-tiered system of supports, which supports all kids to reach their greatest potential. So I feel like these are indicators under that. Now we're looking in the, in the SU board we're here after the first of the year, we wanna get some benchmark data around goal number three, which talks about us reaching out to our community around community partners and student voice. And we think the quantitative data that we'll use around that is attendance data. So we're gonna have some proposed indicators for the board um, around attendance data as well, because we believe that that's a, a real indicator of whether or not we're meeting student needs and really truly engaging them. So stay tuned with that. Um, and then what we will be doing is, is looking at our achievement data annually at each local district level to see where are we on point based on what the SU overall goals have been um, for each district. 
So I think it's it's a really a, a big step forward in regards to high expectations and accountability, but hopefully also letting folks know all the investment that's going into our school system, what it's working toward. Um, and so again, do know that we've got the, the core academic indicators now, but we're also looking at identifying some other quantitative indicators as well. Um, and so stay tuned. Thanks, Bill. Wonderful. Uh, all right, the business manager's report. Good evening. You have my report, which outlines the December due dates for both the business office and the school food authority. And then we have later on on your agenda, the FY21 first draft of the full budget expenditures. Any questions on any of the due dates that are on here? Any other questions? Okay, that's all I got. Okay, thank you, Tara. Thank you everyone for those reports. All right, we'll move on to the celebration of learning. So um, you're about to watch a video. I'll give Parker a little bit of time to get it up and going. Um, so Amy Braun put this together prior to Thanksgiving. It's got student artwork. It's all students across campuses reciting a poem. And this particular group um, is a group that was indigenous to our local area that she's really focused on and went and found their address and greetings to the natural world. And it's also about thanks and gratitude. So um, she put this together to kind of share out right before Thanksgiving with folks, but just a little follow up for you guys to watch. It means many things to many different people in this country. In the last two weeks, kids at Stockbridge and Rochester schools have been discussing the Thanksgiving address to the natural world by the native people. And now the Haudenosaunee Thanksgiving address, greetings to the natural world. Today we have gathered and we see that the cycles of life continue. We have been given the duty to live in balance and harmony with each other and all living things. So now we bring our minds together as one as we give greetings and thanks to each other as people. Now our minds are one. We are all thankful to our mother, the earth, for she gives us all that we need for life. She supports our feet as we walk about upon her. It gives us joy that she continues to care for us as she has from the beginning of time. To our mother, we send greetings and thanks. Now our minds are one. We give thanks to all the waters of the world for quenching our thirst and providing us with strength. Water is life. We know its power in many forms, waterfalls and rain, mists and streams, rivers and oceans. With one mind, we send greetings and thanks to the spirit of the water. Now our minds are one. We turn our minds to all the fish life in the water. They were instructed to cleanse and purify the water. They also give themselves to us as food. We are grateful that we can still find pure water. So now we turn to the fish and send our greetings and thanks. Now our minds are one. Now we turn toward the vast fields of plant life. As far as the eye can see, the plants grow, working many wonders. They sustain many life forms. With our minds gathered together, we give thanks and look forward to seeing plant life for many generations to come. Now our minds are one. With one mind, we turn to honor and thank all the food plants we harvest from the garden. Since the beginning of time, the grains, vegetables, beans, and berries have helped the people survive. Many other living things draw strength from them too. We gather all the plant foods together as one and send them a greeting of thanks. Now our minds are one. 
Now we turn to all the medicine herbs of the world. From the beginning, they were instructed to take away sickness. They are always waiting and ready to heal us. We are happy there are still among us those special few who remember how to use these plants for healing. With one mind, we send greetings and thanks to the medicines and to the keepers of the medicines. Now our minds are one. We gather our minds together to send greetings and thanks to all the animal life in the world. They have many things to teach us as people. We are honored by them when they give up their lives so we may use their bodies for food for our people. We see them near our homes and in the deep forests. We are glad they are still here and we hope that it will always be so. Now our minds are one. Now we turn our thoughts to the trees. The earth has many families of trees who have their own instructions and uses. Some provide us with shelter and shade, others with fruit and beauty and other useful things. Many people of the world use a tree as a symbol of peace and strength. With one mind, we greet and thank the tree life. Now our minds are one. We put our minds together as one and thank all the birds who move and fly about over our heads. The Creator gave them beautiful songs. Each day they remind us to enjoy and appreciate life. The eagle was chosen to be their leader. To all the birds from the smallest to the largest, we send our joyful greetings and thanks. Now our minds are one. We are all thankful to the powers we know as the four winds. We hear their voices in the moving air as they refresh us and purify the air we breathe. They help us to bring the change of seasons. From the four directions they come, bringing us messages and giving us strength. With one mind, we send our greetings and thanks to the four winds. Now our minds are one. Now we turn to the west where our grandfathers, the thunder beings live. With lightning and thundering voices, they bring with them the water that renews life. We are thankful that they keep evil things underground. We bring our minds together as one to send greetings and thanks to our grandfathers, the thunderers. Now our minds are one. We now send greetings and thanks to our eldest brother, the sun. Each day without fail, he travels the sky from the east to west, bringing the light of a new day. He is the source of all the fires of life. With one mind, we send greetings and thanks to our brother, the sun. Now our minds are one. We put our minds together to give thanks to our oldest grandmother, the moon, who lights the nighttime sky. She is the leader of women all over the world, and she governs the movement of the ocean tides. By her changing face, we measure time. And so it is the moon who watches over the arrival of children here on earth. With one mind, we send greetings and thanks to our grandmother, the moon. Now our minds are one. We give thanks to the stars who are spread across the sky like jewelry. We see them in the night, helping the moon to light the darkness and bring dew to the gardens and growing things. When we travel at night, they guide us home. With our minds gathered together as one, we send greetings and thanks to the stars. Now our minds are one. We gather our minds to greet and thank the enlightened teachers who have come to help throughout the ages. When we forget how to live in harmony, they remind us of the way we were instructed to live as people. With one mind, we send greetings and thanks to these caring teachers. Now our minds are one. Now we turn our thoughts to the creator or great spirit 
and send greetings and thanks for all gifts of creation. Everything we need to live a good life is here on this Mother Earth. For all the love that is still around us, we gather our minds together as one and send our choicest words of greetings and thanks to the Creator. We have now arrived at the place where we end our words. Of all the things we have named, it was not our intention to leave anything out. If something was forgotten, we leave it to each individual to send such greetings and thanks in their own way. Now our minds are one. Thank you. Does anybody have any comments or should we move on? No, I had already seen it on Facebook, so I'd already kind of thought it through and reacted then, but I really appreciate um, it being brought to the school board meeting. I think it's important and just like, as any other presentation we've seen so far, the more, more we get to see, I think I feel better about what we're doing. So thank you for bringing it. Agreed. Great. Okay, well, we are going to move on to uh, the anti-racism policy. I don't know if Jamie wants to Sorry. comment on this or who's on the policy committee. Um, it's Ethan, so I can, I can jump on. And so both of these policies have been adopted at the full board. Um, we're actually down to your board and Sharon and FBUD left um, to review and or approve or, or disapprove of the, the two policies before you tonight. We've been working on the anti-racism policy um, since uh, last October. It's been through really essentially six different drafts. Uh, the last one we called the fifth amended. Um, and the bid quotations and procurement policy, that is to be in alignment um, with the changes that happened out of uh, the legislature when there was an influx of federal funds uh, to allow us to move more swiftly um, to utilize those funds um, for different types of purchases. And so that's what changed there. Uh, I expect that that, that, that uh, legislation will remain in effect though. So I don't, I don't think we're gonna have to amend that policy again. And that was what we were advised by uh, to do is align that with um, the legislation that came out by VASBO. Um, so really you guys, uh, what we're looking to is to hopefully move these two policies and adopt them. Um, and then uh, what I have said is that at the full board, I'll give an update in January on where we're at in regards to implementation to policy C30. All right, I would entertain a motion um, for C30, the anti-racism policy. I uh, so move to adopt the um, C30 anti-racism policy. I second. Any discussion? Um, I just want to say, and I think I said it before, I'm trying to repeat myself, but I commend um, our SU and our policy committee and the leadership they've shown and the diligence. This took over, in my understanding, over two years. Uh, as Jamie said, six drafts. They had a number of public, um, 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 public meetings. It took a heck of a lot of input and, 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 and changes to make this thing something that's that's really going to help all of us, uh, no matter what our age is and where we live. So I want to uh, commend and wholeheartedly support uh, this policy. Great. Uh, so there's a motion and a second. We've had discussion. All in favor of uh, adopting the anti-racism policy C30? Say aye. 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 Excellent. Um, and I entertain a motion for the F27 bids.
quotations and procurement policy? Uh, I'd uh, uh, like to move that the F27 uh, policy be adopted. I second. Any discussion? See no discussion. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Excellent. Okay. Order, are you, uh, does Amy Wilt uh, also say aye? Aye, yes, I on both. On both, I <laughs> aye. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so we've adopted both of those. Great. Uh, moving on to discussion items, draft three of the budget. This Take is Wendy and Tara. Do you guys have draft number three? And this is the first time you've kind of seen our expenditures in its entirety. Um, you'll notice that what we're proposing so far is got a 1.66% increase or $71,730.45 of an increase. And what this kind of includes is with all everything you've seen um, in parts and pieces in terms of staffing up to this point, as well as um, kind of support of stipends for mentor teachers, for new teachers. Um, we do provide those mentors for two years at a stipend. Uh, some other highlights that maybe seem a little off. Um, outdoor education and pathways is budgeted into the regular ed or general elementary. There's like no no coding, right, Tara, at the state level for that particular um, entity. And um, you'll also see, so that's under 1100 in regular ed instruction. Another thing that you'll see in 1100 um, in regular ed instruction is the person who is our librarian in Stockbridge, she also teach some general elementary instruction in literacy, as well as does some intervention. So her salary has actually been moved from the librarian piece to the general elementary piece, which would I'll point out, let me get to the right um, section here. I think I would know this by now. Uh, under library services, it's why you see quite the, um, quite the drop in salary in that function code 2220 um, is why you see quite the drop. It's not because we're eliminating library in either school. What was that function code again for the library? 2220. 2220. And the person who is the librarian, so it's a personnel situation, she wears multiple hats for us. So most of her salary um, or all of her salary is now budgeted under 1100. Okay, so all the other hats, it's not that we're getting rid of library. Okay, so it's this is a remarkable this, difference. This 2220 um, 101 teacher salary that supports um, a point librarian position, librarian position in Rochester. That's a point two FTE? Correct. Thank you. Yep. Um, and then um, some other noticeable differences that I'll draw your attention to um, is under um, tech services. So that is section technology support 2490. You'll see that that has changed from 45. Hold on, 2490. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, last page. Yep. I just want to get to the page while you're talking. You'll see that there's quite a difference in some of that is truly a couple of things. We shifted stuff to our tech assessment from the SU, as well as we really, over the past two years, put quite a bit into making sure that our devices and technology pieces are up to date. So we don't foresee, knock on wood, any needs for major purchases in terms of devices, which is where most of that money had come from. So that's why you see quite the um, drop right there. But it's also, 
we drop where the equipment is dropped from eleven thousand three hundred dollars. That's actually moved up to supplies because the new universal chart of accounts from the agency of education required us to actually code them as supplies moving forward. So that's making that adjustment as well. Okay. Um, and then the other big section that you probably see some change to do. do, do. Um, under office of the principal in 2410. Um, uh, item object code for, or excuse me, 531 telephone services. Um, that supports our actual expenditure, and that's why there's an increase. And why is there such an increase? Well, it's because we're now E911 compliant in both buildings, and that comes with more lines and ports and things of that nature. Um, so that is why there's been quite a jump there as well as in um, same in 2410 office of the principal under 105 supervisor salary. That's a leadership stipend for someone who helps when I'm in the office of building as well as she will also be the person who's helping keep all the social media and website items up to date. So it includes your stipend. Those are the big changes, but if folks have other questions or Tara, if I missed anything, but that's what I have from our Just notes. a few things I'd like to point out. So the, all the object codes 593, which are your SU assessment codes, those are all subject to change once the supervisory union central office and the supervisory union special education budgets are approved so there will be adjustments to the 593 object codes which are scattered throughout the budget under their primary function code okay um I have some specific clarifying questions, but maybe I, I don't know if I should open up to everybody else first. Anybody have any specific questions for Tara? Robert? Um, I know this is a difficult uh, question to answer, but we're seeing very large projected uh, increases in the cost of living. Um, how are we, are, have you been able to make some estimates in how this could affect the budget in the future? I mean, we're, we're looking at, if you look at the government, at the, um, uh, the the federal projections, we're talking like five, six percent. So we, as far as the salary and benefits go, yes, you're seeing our projections in there. And I believe Tara is using as far as fuel oil and things, what we're actually currently being billed at so at right now and projecting on top of it. And the same with tuitions, we budget in an increase there as well. Um, and <clears throat> the other thing we're budgeting in tuitions, which does impact you, is that the Sharon Academy is trying to um, get it so in legislation and or through the Agency of Education to demonstrate school quality standards. And if so, um, that would allow them to announce their tuition. The proposed announced tuition would be 18,500, which is a pretty significant jump. It's almost $100 or a little over $1,900. And so we are budgeting at that 18,500 amount in the event that that occurs. Um, and then we budget 2% on top of prior year's tuition everywhere else uh, based on trends. Tara, did I get that all right? You did. Good. I think that's I think that's smart to put that projected um, tuition in there for Sharon. Cause... And the benefit with your budget and the fact that we go later in the year, um, yeah. announced tuition rates are due January 15th. So we'll actually be able to revise your budget based on the actual announced tuition rates for FY23. Excellent. That is May versus anywhere else. Um, 
Well, speaking of tuition, could you go through the object codes 561, 562, 563, and just kind of explain why there's what they are? Absolutely. They're all, they're all so tuition, but. Object code 561 is for public schools. Okay. For 7 through 12 students, right, Tara? Nope, it's for all public schools. So you also have um, in there built in case you have a student who would go to a private or sorry, a public pre-K outside of yours. So there's also one line code for that. But otherwise, yes, that's all public schools. They get coded as an object code 561. Object code 562 is any non-Vermont school. And 563 are private schools. 568 is the vocational tech center tuition that the agency of education pays on your behalf. So as you recall in your prior budgets, that shows up as both a revenue and an expense. So it's cost neutral on your budget. And that's their contribution that they make by statute to the vocational schools on your behalf. Object code 569 is any other tuition. And right now that's primarily the actual vocational trans the vocational tuition that you pay based on your six semester average to each of the vocational schools that your students attend or have attended in the past six semesters. Great. Um, is the decrease in tuition because of uh, we're graduating a that many students and we're not replacing them coming coming up at, through the seventh grade is is that what the large change is yes this is based on current enrollment that you have and then if we need to make any additional adjustments once um lindy's had an opportunity and her staff has had an opportunity to work with your students to find out where they're anticipating going for seventh through 12th grade okay Thank you. There's currently um, 76 students accounted for in this tuition. Great. Sure. It looks like too, we've got more students choosing to go to potentially private. Mm -hmm. Yes. So when you have students going to a private school, remember we don't pay more than the state average tuition. Okay. Great. I have a question um, about line 593. It indicates um, SU assessment for special ed instruction. Yep. Is, does that number uh, primarily include just the salary for instruction or are there other components? That is the that? entire special education budget. Okay. So that is all staff, tuition, transportation, contracted okay. services. It's okay. the entire special education budget. And then you pay an assessment of that budget based on your average daily membership. Okay, thank you. That the line she was asking about is that the 593 under the 1100 function code? Or under 1200. 1200. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. It's okay. special education. Yeah. Okay. Um, some individual function codes have a 234 and others don't. And I was just wondering why. That's the retirement retirement beamers. Um, because beamers is only for your municipal em employees that are under the municipal entire retirement system, which okay. are non-professional teach non-professional staff. Yeah. So okay. it doesn't apply to everybody. Right. So is is P, so potentially PE and music are non-professional staff, but no PE and music are teachers. They're on a teacher contract. They're part of the Vermont State Teachers Retirement System. So for the PE, we're not funding it, though. You wouldn't fund it. Your PE teacher is not part of Beamers. Oh, okay. So it's specific to right. Beamers is the Vermont Municipal Employee Retirement System. 
and okay. vistas is the vermont state teachers retirement system the vistas opeb which is object code 232 that is the health assessment that we pay in for new licensed teachers and you pay that from the time they enter the system until they leave your district so that's why you'll see under some of those codes there's that vistas opeb yeah okay i understand thank you you're welcome um uh, for 1400, um, the athletics and co coordinated. What is it's what is that for? It's per the master agreement, you have to have money in there available for co curricular offerings. It could be a robotics club, it could be anything, and it's a okay. stipend. money for, for, for clubs. Okay, thank you. Um, to 2190, other special services? Again, I just was wondering what that was. That's for your 504 students. Yeah. Okay. Great. And they often require specific transportation that's uh, personalized. That's what that transportation is. The 519. Yeah, that's, that's, that's as um, much as I can answer that without it becoming identifiable. Okay. Um, okay, and in, in the, um, I just, we touched on the technology, the 2490. Um, and I, I do understand the equipment was moved into uh, 650 supplies and technology. I, it is still $42,000. And I just uh, didn't know if there was any what the specific plan purchases for that were or if it was um, if there was any. So that uh, also no. includes all of your software subscriptions. Right. Okay. Is also part of that. It's for supplies and then any equipment purchases um, that were anticipated. Lindy, were there specifics that what I have from Ray doesn't give me specific equipment purchases? No it's specific. It's just for a yeah, just replacement of parts. And so the, the it's a majority of it is truly subscription. Yeah, there's a, mo our software subscriptions are substantial. The the other thing is we are in a five year cycle now, and yep. so we plan to replace devices every five years, uh, and so Ray it budgets accordingly now in every district across the SU to ensure we can do that. Wonderful. Uh, so that's that's part of his his budget as well. Technology is definitely moving fast ahead, so we definitely want to keep up with that to be able to provide. Absolutely. Good. Great. Well, thank you. That um, that definitely answers all my questions that I had. And um, I, you know, as we look at this budget and we um, are hear all the wonderful things that uh, our district is doing and is able to do and is moving forward with um, with our kids, I think it's if if uh, this is the the if this is what the administration feels that they need to be able to do what we have been doing i i definitely support that because i'm very impressed with the direction that we are going so um does anybody else have any more uh, questions or comments on the budget okay bill's got his hand up sorry oh, okay he's, <laughs> he's partially off camera to me so okay he sorry sometimes... that. Uh -huh. um same question I had before, but I think it's important to reinforce it, the, the answer, and that is under 1112 music, which first cut looks like we we're cutting it in half and we're not. So could you tell me the answer again? And I think it's important because those of us who believe in the arts, um, it starts with music and the arts. And so this looks like we're, we're cutting it to the bone. And I recall that you had an explanation which were you're reorganizing it so that, that the actual music arts element of this was not being cut. So would you clarify that for me? Please? I was based on your new hire. 
Right. It was based on a new hire, and we also had shifted the structure of that position. So it last year, um, at the time that this budget was approved, that position not only included music instruction, but it also included a person who was um, endorsed to teach outdoor education as well. So the person was going to do outdoor education and music. We now are structured differently. So some of our outdoor ads, so some of this music position money has been moved into that general elementary 1100. And this really supports which, what we have, which is one full day of music instruction for all classes in each building, as well as instrumental lessons and chorus that's shared a third day a week. And that supports based on the needs and interests of our students. Right. And in the write up of the budget, please make that. Yes. Uh, I think yeah, that's, that's a, that's a good reminder. Um, something. Uh, another one is at the end of it again uh, on, on debt service, that's uh, 5020, last page. Uh, we've got another principal payment of 65000 Could uh, Tara, could you tell us how close we are of um, completing that long term debt service and what's it for? Sorry, I lost my screen there. That sure. is for your bonds. Yep. And the last payment, I actually have it written in here, so I know when it is. Just got to get to it. September and December of 22. So is this the last year of that? Um, um, the last payment will be June of 2023. Okay, so we're, we're we're getting very close to the end of that. Okay, I think that was for the high school. Last budget cycle. Last budget cycle. So this will be in. Yep. Thank you. Um, and my last questions address both to Jamie and Lindy. Um, is the budget uh, that you're proposing here? adequate and sufficient to reach the goals, the academic goals, the um, the need to keep talented staff here and attract talented staff to take care of our physical plant, to take care of the supplies and materials to keep things moving. Is this something that you're comfortable with relative to our goals and obligations as a public school system? Uh, yeah. I am very comfortable with it. I feel like it really supports our goals. Uh, quite a quite a few goals, right? Not just mathematics and literacy. I think the outdoor education piece is in here, which is important. We've added world languages, and I know that that's something everyone has loved and has been really enjoyable to see in our schools. So I, I think it's there and supports it. Um, I, I have asked just for some staff feedback on this to make sure there's not something I'm missing. There's yep. not something that they're saying that they need that we haven't budgeted for. And um, I haven't heard anything overwhelming yet, but they have until Friday to give that to me. So um, just because sometimes they see something I don't or they need something yep. that's come up as we've started to implement um, you know, new, new uh, materials and things like that within our Okay. And I commend you to ask staff for that feedback and that, that thing. Jamie, what's, uh, what's well, your I mean, assessment? we're, we're awaiting the uh, EI audits, right? And so I think one of the things the board has to keep in mind here in the near term and long term is that I do believe we have some significant upgrades to do in both our buildings. And so I think as we're budgeting for the now, instructionally, yes, I feel good about the staff that Wendy has. I would say, but I do think we need to, as we're talking about paying off this bond payment and things, know that we're going to have some investments in our two schools again here. And so uh, I do believe that we'll find some efficiencies, which will help pay for some of that work. Yeah. But I do need to, I do think that we need to prepare that we're going to need to be budgeting um, for that in the future as well. So uh, I'm keeping that in mind too. Um, I'm a big believer. If you've done any reading uh, Pink's uh, work in regards to the brain, the book's called The Brain by Pink. It uh, talks a lot about the aesthetics 
of the place of work, including schools. And, um, you know, I think that there is a lot of delayed maintenance in our buildings here in ARSA, but across the SU, really. Um, and so I'm really looking for us to ensure that when our teachers are coming to work, we're setting really high expectations professionally in regards to the workplace they're coming to. And the same goes for our students in our communities. And so uh, that is an area that I'm going to be talking to the boards more about here as we look to future budgets that we really got to look to do some pretty significant investment in that area. Thank you. And that's important to know because we're not, our horizon is not just six months, 12 months. Uh, it's multiple years and, and, and strong, uh, vibrant organizations are those that can plan ahead and prepare for the future. Uh, my last question has to do with um, the state per student cap. Um, how does this budget fit within the proposed budget uh, fit within your understanding of where that cap may be for the next fiscal year? We have not worked on the revenue side of the budgets at this point in time. So I won't know that until we do the revenue side, but I can tell you that the cap or the X, the threshold for FY23 is $19,977. Give that again, what is it? $19,977. And so, Bill, we're still waiting on our equalized pupils too. Yeah. Which of course is a and that might be better with a, a, a huge a, indicator a, with this. So, um, the it, the excess spending threshold did drop up pretty significantly. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to be well under it based on the expenditure side um, as we look. And I don't know exact numbers, but we do have more students from tuition sending town in our buildings this year than we have than we did last year. So our tuition should jump up, or our revenue should jump up slightly. I can't yep. speak hard numbers, but just knowing who's in the building, <laughs> I do know we have more students from Granville, Hancock, and Pittsfield, and, and sending towns in our preschool as well. So that all helps us. The yield is good, even conservatively, the conservative outlook of the yield. The ad fund had a $90 million surplus. Um, the by all indications both vermont uh, school uh the business managers association the aoe and the vermont soups uh, they gave us two proposed yields we'll use the conservative number for our yield uh, although by your budget often we know which is a plus again <laughs> we know what the legislature actually said um but for other budgets we'll use the conservative one my sense is there's already proposals on the table to use some of that surplus actually to hopefully put some um, dollars into our buildings, yeah. which would be huge. I'm a huge advocate of that. I, I, they talked about tech centers. I hope it's for all public schools. Um, and I'm a big proponent of making certain we're investing in our rural elementary schools. So I'll certainly be out on the front line speaking to that um, and advocating for that. Uh, the CLA is something we've got to watch really closely too, though because real estate did go up. Um, and so even though the yield's looking really good for us, the excess spending, I'm curious to see what the CLA is going to come in at. And of course, we know that has a, a plays a big factor in taxes as well. So thank you. Well, won't the uh, CLA, is there a delay on that though? Anyway. There is. Yeah. As someone whose sister works for that department, there's a delay. Uh -huh. <laughs> she just started, but she shared that with me the yeah. other day because she was over here trying to help these two communities. So, so we're, we're certain not, it's certainly not going to affect this cycle, but it's probably yeah. the next thing. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's just all those things that we got to keep in mind. And then the one other thing also that will impact your tax rate is the last, um, you now lose that merger incentive that's over. That, that was two cents in the current fiscal year. It'll be zero for 23. Did you, Jamie, did you say that the Vermont Education Fund actually has surplus? A 90 million. So they were, forever they were saying that we were, there was a hole in the Ed Fund and that they were in a major deficit. 
how it can swing to a surplus of 90 million is wow okay. well there's such a huge influx of federal dollars which probably yeah. had and they use that mm -hmm. and so that that's what we're seeing now we're also seeing inflation as robert said so it, you know it's it's all you know the the fiscal landscape is i think we just have to really stay in tune yeah. with it right now hopefully great well good work guys thank you is there any other comments or questions about the budget okay great thank you very much all right uh moving on uh justine the bowl board goals short term long term you want to report out to us on yes thank you um so we met last week and um we uh quickly came uh to the conclusion that we um, in order to determine what goals we were going to establish, we had to understand um, the difference between these words we were throwing around vision, mission, and goals. Um, and through our discussion, we um, determined that the vision is basically um, what we feel is the overarching theme and uh, underneath vision is Mish, the word mission, which can be divided up into several different subtopics. And within those subtopics, we then can establish our goals. We haven't completed this journey yet, but um, in using uh, the topics we talked about at our retreat, we work to synthesize um, some of those into these um, pockets of vision, mission, and goals. So um, the overarching theme that uh, we were able to put together from our our topics at the retreat. Um, we decided at the end of our meeting to share rigorous creative education as our vision, kind of overarching um, our our mission, which consisted of the themes that kept coming up at our, at our retreat, which involved um, integrating the arts. More, more, more often into the into the school experience, um, the outdoor learning piece, ha, um, how we can integrate that into the the curriculum. Um, so integration was our first uh, under mission, and our second was the culture of learning. This is a topic we um, went over at the retreat and kind of left there a little bit, um, but the the premise was um to cultivate an environment where the words i don't know are okay um to foster a comfortable space for uncomfortable learning to create a culture of learning that that allows kids to feel they can ask questions um that was number two under mission and number three under mission um came up in our retreat and beyond transparency that keeps coming up in lots of conversations um, but we added to that communication and uh, connecting with the community and with parents so our discussion was boiled down to these topics and from that we really only came up with a potential goal of attempting to charge the the school to provide a way to communicate curriculum to the parents, whether it be a display, a binder, some sort of, um, this is an example of a goal, what a, what a goal would be, is to, that every classroom would have a way to communicate the ongoing curriculum of the year to parents on a daily basis. Um, there are a few different topics that we didn't touch on. Um, Academic achievement was a topic that we talked about for goals at the retreat, funding and budget, and also buildings and maintenance. So those still need to be kind of formulated under this mission tier. And I wanted to report to you and and see if the board had any comment and if they would give us our blessing to move forward, their blessing to move forward with this process as we have begun. Does anybody have a comment for Justine? 
sounds like you have a, um, a working process uh, mm -hmm. and it's going to take work. And so we don't expect instant, instant results. That's perhaps a good sign. <laughs> Yeah, the thing that we wanted to be careful about was to kind of go through all of this process, discussion, synthesis, ph philosophizing, and then um, show up with this, what we would consider finished product to a board and have it be completely overwhelming and potentially not at all what the rest of the board would want. So this is kind of like the, the bare bones version of where we're going with this. I think it sounds good and keep up the good work. Great. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Okay. Um, board guiding principles and protocols. I think we all have a copy of that either in our packet or it was emailed to us. Uh, is there any discussion? On this, I thought it looked very good. I think that there's been a lot of thought put into it. Um, I open it up for any uh, other comments or questions or discussion. If I can just add, I love this document. <laughs> I really think it's good. I think it's it's um, really speaks to the way that you're trying to conduct yourselves. I, I can feel that way as a superintendent and appreciate it. And um, I'm really excited about you folks considering sharing this concept with the full board um, and see if there's interest there and pursuing a document like this, and much like we do policy, then possibly rolling that out to the other district boards. When we talk about interdependence, I think that that could be really powerful. Um, and so I would just say that I, I really think you hit the mark on a lot of this, so. Great. Well, I think tonight we're hoping to adopt this as a, um, as a board principles and protocol. Um, so I open it up for a uh, motion to to adopt this or to accept this. I'd like to move uh, that the board adopt the board governance principles and operating protocols uh, as enumerated in this uh, document uh, dated draft for December 7th, 2021. I'll second that. Wonderful. Any further discussion? All right. We have no discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So moved. Thank you. Great work. Uh, there being no new hires or resignations, we move on to public comment. And I'm looking at my list and I don't believe I see that there is any public. Okay. Uh, future agenda items. Anybody have uh, any? So I had down the uh, board kind of run Facebook page. Yeah. Yep. Um, certainly the budget. I think the board goals short term and long term will continue. Uh, to be a discussion as we move forward. Uh, of course, all your reports, there'll be a celebration of learning. Anything else? I have a question. Um, something that came to mind when we were voting on the um, the guiding principles is, is there, um, could we have a discussion on how we would um, work to implement them and, and maybe make sure we're doing them? I feel like it's it's easy to get this chunk, you know, chunk of language um, that we have, but I, I don't know if we can. It can be kind of a more active adoption process in any way. Does that make sense? Yes, I, that that would seem. Uh, you're, you're basically set out what the goals and the visions are, but then we we have to see how what the next steps are, and that's that's appropriate. 
Oh, I'm talking about the the, the rules. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> like the guy, uh, the guiding principles that we just voted in. Okay. Um, could we have a follow up where we could maybe kind of bring back and discuss um, implementing mm -hmm. some of that, or discuss any ways to go forward? In because I think that it's easy to to have this, but it's not easy to know whether we're doing it. Yeah, I think Justine, it's like a, when you as a in different teams set norms, you should be revisiting those. Yes. Like this is kind of your guiding norms and work as a board. So I'm happy to um, build in a discussion around like a reflection of those or something. Um, yeah. Yeah, that sounds like what, what I'm getting at. I, I totally agree with that. Um, we haven't really gone down one by one and kind of, do we all agree understanding what the words really mean and what if this, what if that? And I think Justin, you're right on. The, the goal of this is kind of we're working as a team together. Um, and part of that is understanding our ground rules and expectations. and. We haven't really gone into a heavy discussion with that, but I think it's very, very, very worthwhile. Um, and so I, um, I think that's worthwhile whether we do that monthly, little bits at a time, or we have a retreat or something. I totally think you're right on on that. And then I think at the end of the year, um, um, and this is a totally original idea that the board, one of the things we do is the closing out of the school year, whatever it is, or in the summer, we kind of do a self-assessment, uh, individual board members. How did we do with our governance principles and our protocols? Did we follow these things? Um, one of the things in here is no surprises that if we have an idea or, or something that's bothering us, we work through the chair and we don't just throw a tomato or a bomb at a public session. Well, how did, well did we practice that? That sometimes takes some discipline. Yeah. So I think a, a way that Justin, we can kind of self-assess ourselves at the end of the year is how did we do? And, yeah, I like uh, that idea, Bill, a lot. Um, and, and what kind of, st it struck me um, when Jamie was saying maybe offering this to, to the, the, the rest of the boards that I think if we um, really understood it and hashed it out in a, in a manner like this, it might be really helpful for others as we're kind of piloting this on. Absolutely. Great. Uh, any other future agenda items? I think that sounds good. Sounds like a manageable meeting for next, next month. Okay. Um, so our next meeting date is Tuesday, January 4th, 2022. Yeah, amazing. Mm -hmm. 630 uh, at the Stockbridge campus and also on Google Meets. All right, well, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.